Good morning and aloha. Good morning. Welcome to this morning's worship service. My name is Shen Yu, and I'll be assisting my guest pastor, Reverend Van Tal. We would like to welcome all the new visitors who decide to join us for today's worship service. And we'd also like to thank Vanessa Alta the Rosenbush for the beautiful altar flowers. Um, and welcome to today's worship service as well. Um, for the gathering music today, by the Good morning. Good morning. 
feedback from the family of God here in Waigo. So let us lift up our praises in the of yours. There's small of your life because of his love. Let us sing our his worthiness for our humble praise.
on board for investing. As we're watching. Yeah. Marginalization, that's a fancy word, but basically it's when we go from this to this. We say, there's something about you that I don't like. I don't want to be a part of that is uncomfortable for me. And it's not a you issue, it's a me issue. It's, um, today's lesson it deals a lot with leprosy. And I could, you know, I don't know. You know more than me about the history of why and the leprosy and all that. So I don't want to go into all that. But it is our way of separating ourselves. So instead of each other and moving towards this, we say, there's something about you that could harm me that I don't feel comfortable with. So we move through this way. It's been a part of my life. I felt marginalized in a lot of ways. I, I felt like an outsider to a lot of things. Um, the work that I do as an army chaplain, I'm not infantry. I will never be infantry. That's not my job. That's not who I am. So I'm a part from other people. And I'm marginalized in a lot of ways. I'm sure you are too. You know, in some ways, I feel like we all feel it. We all feel like you're not a part of something because Something doesn't, somebody doesn't like something about us. And that's not a me issue. It's not because they don't love, it's not because they don't try, it's not because they don't care. It's because somebody sees themselves as separate. I think that's a hard thing to remember that it's not us, it's them. Cool. That's what I got. Yeah? <laughs> I think that was easier to order, order me than, you know. So I didn't receive any prayer requests this morning, which I have tons of prayer requests for myself, for the things on my heart that I would love for you all to know that, that God already knows, but it's helpful to say out loud. And I know that I'm not the only one. I know that we all have different prayer requests and praises and, and things that we think about constantly. I will admit, whenever as we were just saying, my, my mind, mind was wandering off to, um, to lots of my friends who were struggling, and myself who was struggling in certain areas. And um, instead of worshiping through song, I was thinking about other things, and I was distracted. So, <laughs> so my prayer um, is to not be distracted. I get even distracted, but also turn my attention to God and where it should be. Um, to, not focus on the things of life right now, but to be here and present and in this community. Um, and to be with God and to be with each other, to be with you all. Yeah, so prayers and praises and things that they, we always lift up. We can always lift them up. But, um, and it's not that my prayers just because my work today mean anything more than yours. Um, but we all have them. And, We'll bring to God into each other. Father, God, we, we thank you for being worthy of our praise. God, we thank you that when we say, giving you our, our all in all, that we can mean giving you our all in all. And, and while life distracts us and the things that are on our hearts and our minds are, are present and they are real, Lord, that you are, you are real and you are present. And we thank you for that. We thank you for meeting us in this in this building. To know that you aren't contained in this building, but you are a part of all of our lives and you are taken out from here and, and with us as we go. Um, but life is difficult, God. And we all have concerns and we all have things in our heart. And life is not as we would want it to be. And that's the nature of life. And we thank you for being in that. And we pray that we may see you in life so that the challenges are, aren't so challenging, but we can focus on you. In your role in our lives, in your love for us. God, as I think specifically about a dear friend, 
just going through this unimaginable thing that we that we be with her. For my son, for my parents, for my family, friends that aren't here on the time of living, God, I pray for them. For my brother who is here, who's visiting, um, I pray for him. And Lord, that's just my life. Lord, for everybody's lives in this room, for how you reach us and how you touch us, and for how you minister to us. God, I ask you to be present, to comfort us, to bring us peace, so that we may know you, and that you may know us, and, and that the world around us may know you. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture lesson comes from the Old Testament, 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1 to 3, and 7 to 15. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master in high favor, because by him the Lord had given him victory in Syria. He was a mighty man of valor, but he was also a leper. Now the Syrians on one of their raids had carried off a little girl from the land of Israel, and she worked in the service of Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, Would that my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. And when the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man sent word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Only consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come down to me that you may know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman was angry and went away, saying, Behold, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God, and wave his hand over the place, and cure the leper. Are not Abana and Parker, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So turned and went away in rage. But his servants came near and said to him, My father, it is the great word that the prophet has spoken to you. Will you not go to it? Has he actually said to you, Wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of man of God. And flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and he came and stood before him. And he said, Behold, I know that there is no God in all earth but in Israel, so accept now a present from your servant. This is the word of God. The New Testament comes from Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered the village, he was met by ten lepers, who stood at a distance, and lifted up in their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, He said, He said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is good news. Great to you, Lord Christ. Chad, thank you. Yeah, so when I was, I'll be honest, when I was reading these passages for this week from the lectionary, I had no idea how to approach this. On the surface, it's a story about leprosy and about how Jesus. Does a miracle and he heals, but 
there's so much underneath the surface of, of the stories. Yeah, I was talking earlier just about marginalization and how we fear the things that we don't understand. So, um, leprosy, which has largely been eradicated um, now and it's no longer a disease, well, it still affects millions of people, but it's curable. And it's just a simple inf infection that was, um, I always heard unclean, but you know, if, if you take care of it, if you get the medication, well, it's fine, but we can take care of leprosy. And growing up and coming to the island and visiting, like people would tell me stories and celebrities and I would pull on from them and um, always heard about Molokai and Father Damien and how there's this, this colony of people that were just kind of set apart. They were marginalized, but they were deemed unclean. Um, and said, we don't want you with the rest of society, so go live off on this place and, um, and live your lives, but don't come near us and we won't come near you. And how incredibly sad that is. I've done research and reading this week about um, people's stories from Molokai. And, uh, you know, and they were, when they were 1969, I think, is when that ended. And, and they were like, some of them were like, no, we want to stay here. This is where our life is. Like, you, you set us apart, and, and we have this life, and we love it, and we're going to stay. And I thought, man, that is something that I would do. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go do my own thing. And, uh, forget you all, and you, you already have to decide, but. As a society, that I'm going to live my life and do my own thing and help me out with it. So, so perhaps to those people, but and they let go of what was of what society had told them. And they were just living their life and, and they enjoyed it, and I, I think that's super cool. But um, sorry, that was not very anyway, not very great on this. Yeah, in in this story, so there's our so there's leprosy. Throughout the Bible, um, Jesus does miracles, and like we saw the Old Testament miracle where people are just made clean. Um, and it, it was always one of, like, so they're setting aside something, like that has become their identity. Uh, but then they're healed of it in this miraculous way. And they don't believe it. They, they just go off and they say, all right, I'm now I'm healed and I can rejoin society and be great. But before that, they were unclean. They were marginalized. They were saying, all right, go look off in the distance. Don't interact with the rest of us. We don't want it to be to catch whatever you have and, and live the life that you're living. So um, we'll see you later, but we won't interact with you. And that's kind of the story of my first in the Bible. And that's not God. God will not let us go. God will, will pursue us. And even if we run away from God, it'll God will always be there. God will never marginalize. And I think that's a wonderful thing. So, it's um, so a preview, but let's go to, go to God in prayer. Because you know, that'll help me. <laughs> God, we come before you this morning. We, we thank you for loving us. Lord, for the lives that we live, for the people that we are, for never separating ourselves from us. God, is, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, God. May this be a message from you and a message that we can all hear and apply to our lives. And we thank you for being here. In your name, amen. You know. And this is just an aside. Sometimes I, think, I get awestruck by the fact that like, God is here with us. That God is in each of you and, and you are here and, and that God's presence is, is in this building. I think I was really just reflecting, like, you know, this is just a building. It, it could go away, and, um, and this is just a place, but God is with the people, and God is in the people. And that's what I love about church, and that um, I can always feel God's presence. You know, that stuff. Sorry, it's been silent. Yeah, so marginalization is, so thank you, Erica, but um, it is. Us saying that like, there's something different about you and I don't like it and you need to go away. Like live off separately. And, and as we had people had done to the people with leprosy and or others were unclean and um, even in our own lives as as I've been marginalized, as I'm I was I grew up in, with the last name Alba or Alba and in a rural town in Ohio and then people didn't really understand what that was. So no real Asian or you know, just no real anything except for 
white bread in America. Um, it was interesting to grow up there. But um, did I mean immigrants coming to this island? Um, I'm sure that they were marginalized. People who worked in the sugar cane fields, you know, just laborers, anybody who was seen as as different, as threatening, as not a part of a way of life, as have been marginalized. As we get older, on the backs of um, age, ageism is a thing. And as we get older, people seem to care about us less. It's just we value less the, the wisdom and the thing that, that the art owners bring to our society. It's, at least that it is only on the Western front. So I, I love Eastern culture where we um, embrace our, our loved ones, our elders, but on the Western side, we don't really do that as much. On the back of your bulletin, it talks about um, this being Disability Access Sunday in the United Church of Christ. Um, and I think about that a lot because my church back in Cleveland, Ohio, has stairs and it's built up on many levels and on top of the hill. And if you had a disability, you wouldn't be able to go there. So um, just the structure of it would say, all right, we don't want you. We, we are not accepting of, of who you are and your disability and how God has made you. I hate that. I hate that our our structures, our society, our our way of living has built up these things to say if you're not this certain way, you're not welcome in, into the kingdom of God. Because it's not true. Um, it's not true at all. And living on the margins, it's extremely lonely. It is it's sad. It is um, ask anybody who's ever felt discriminated against in, in any sort of way. Just because of who you are and because you're a friend of me um, doesn't mean that you get to, to disrespect me. You know, I, I think of Iran and what's happening in that country right now just because somebody is of a, of a different gender and they the rules and things and you know, they want to impose that and that these people are marginalized. And I'm, I'm happy about the protests and I'm happy that people People are standing up for themselves and they're saying, no, we, we are not accepting this way of life that you have heard of us. I'm not saying that's the best way to go about, but they are getting worldwide attention. Um, and whether it works or not, like, people are becoming aware of, of that society and how things work. And, um, and I think there's a growing recognition that you know we don't have to push people away, that we can bring them in. Whatever rules or structures or things that we've built up, it, it's just things that we've done. So let's bring the people closer together. And hopefully it affects change. Um, and that's why I, can't, I love the UCC. I love the UCC for a lot of reasons. Um, it, it is a great, like, we will call ourselves a denomination of firsts. And whether we all agree with it or not, like if we are very progressive as a denomination, so we'll, um, we'll, we'll welcome all types of people into our church, and um, it's a wonderful thing. And I think that's coming from Columbia, Ohio, which is like the headquarters of the UCC, but um, I will always be a poster child for it because I believe that's how God is. God doesn't marginalize us, He doesn't push us away. Um, yeah, God is just a welcoming, loving, Spirit and embodiment, and that's what we're called to do as Christians, as, as people who love God, who love each other, to not separate ourselves, to not fall to our prejudices, to not fall to our ills, um, to not say, you're unclean and I want nothing to do with you, but to say, you might be unclean, but I, you know, I'll embrace it. I don't care. I don't care who you are or, or what you do or where you come in life. Let's sit down, let's have a meal, let's gather and fellowship. I think that's a model that Christ taught from just in his life. So in the story, so so these these ten people with leprosy, they come to Jesus and they say, Master Lord, which is one of the few times this occurs in the Bible, but they're in the story, the book of Luke. So they say, Master Lord, like you Help us, help us become well, help us become whole. And Jesus does Jesus' thing, he says, okay, you're, you're clean, you're forgiven, go to the priest and, and you'll be fine. 
Uh, and in that day, the, the priest was the one who declared people with leprosy to be unclean and just go to home apart. So he was sending them away, knowing that they would be healed on their journey. And as they're going, one, the, the Samaritan, who is already Samaritans and Galileans and this whole like, political thing and the social thing in that realm, they all, Samaritans are marginalized anyways. And then there's a Samaritan leprosy. So here he comes back to Jesus, who is a Jewish rabbi. Um, he says, thank you. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for blessing He's the only one who does it. I think that's amazing. He let go of his identity as somebody who's marginalized, as somebody who's been set apart, as somebody who, who is seen as different. And I'm sure that he came up front of his identity and says, you know what, I'm different. I'm, I'm less than I'm other. Um, he's able to let that go. He's able to go back and worship Christ and say, thank you. I think that's what worship is, is saying thank you and, and embracing God instead of um, pushing God away. I think that's amazing that, that this gentleman, this Samaritan, is able to put all of that aside and to say, you know what? I want to follow Christ. I want to go back to Christ and thank this man for, for healing me. Of this thing that's afflicted me for my entire life. I was looking for ways in my own life that you know, I can let go of things in my identity, uh, things that I might feel marginalized for, things I might feel discriminated for, um, and say thank you. I think one is being a chaplain, you know, just having this role in life that people don't understand. Uh, and just saying, you know what, I, whatever, I will join you as much as I can join you and, and want to join you um, in the things that you are doing because even though I'm older than everybody I work with and, and less physically capable of doing some of the things, I'm still going to try because I want to let go of this thing of being on high and come down. Or I can think of, it's a, a little bit more personal, um, it was letting go of my role of being an in-person father and embracing this new identity of, all right, relationships have changed. It's cool. And let go of wanting like, structure and like a say in daily life and, and things like that and just embracing what it is. So as much as I love my son, I know that I'm not there with him every day. Um, and I have to embrace that because that is reality. Um, and even though it's something I fight against, yeah, because I'd love to um, be there every day. I can't say, all right, go brush your teeth. But I can't say, all right, I love you. I hope you brush your teeth. And there's just, just some examples of things that I'm letting go of that are like parts of my identity that I would see myself as and see my, my role as. But maybe, I have to rethink things to connect with people and to connect with God in different ways. Okay. And I guess the final, <laughs> final thought that I have is that while we might be marginalized by this world, we're never marginalized by God. God is always reaching out to us, and God is always um, pursuing us. As I actually talked about the, the leading of the 99 sheep to go chase the one. I love that song. Who sings it? Maybe Neil you know, or, or whatever. But um, just the image of of this one sheep just being lost and then being constantly, consistently pursued um, is just amazing to me. That that we have been that lost sheep. We are that lost sheep in so many aspects of life. When God is constantly pursuing us. So one of the, the coolest things that I um, I've learned is. Is God's presence in this world. Um, and it's not that I see God in like visions and hear God's voice. I, I see God in people. I see God in their, their smiles, how they're living out, um, the fruits of the Spirit. So that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and control. Whenever I see somebody exercise one of those things, I you know if somebody smiles at me, I say, hey, that's, that's God. That's God in this world. Um, their interactions, their conversations, through just people's loving kindness to me, which I don't deserve at all, but maybe I do. Maybe that's something I have to go. So, 
say that's correct. I do all of this. I'm in this community and I'm here. You know, it's a wonderful thing. Constantly being pursued by God is something that I would need to work on in my, in my life. And I hope that we all know in the work that you all do to know that you're constantly being pursued by God and being prayed for and loved and embraced. In one way or another, if that's not how we want, maybe we just have to rethink how things are. I will turn to God in prayer. Father, thank you for loving us. Love that they're in ways that we don't know, in ways that we don't see fully, things that we may not realize, but that you are there and you are working with your actors. You know, just be prepared for the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Most of us, to feel you, to feel you in our presence as we go throughout our days. Um, thank you for loving us, for never casting us aside, for always being there for us. And we pray that we can do that for each other as a community. In your son's name, amen. Will the usher please come forward for this morning's offering? We have a prayer offering for safe travels as Cassidy travels to Las Vegas from Daniel, Judy, and Cassidy and Hernandez to my Thank you. the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. So maybe turn them back to you. Or for travel, for people, relationships, for the things that we bless. We ask that you to bless them. Amen. Amen. For today's announcements, we would like to thank Pastor Ben Powell being our guest in this service today. Uh, mahalo to those who have donated to Kulan's Give a Bola campaign. If you haven't already done so, please submit your receipt in the Oxford Bowl or give it to uh, someone in the finance committee, and that includes myself. So it can be added to your donation statement. If you have some free time this week, stop by the church to water plants or lend a hand and clean the yard on Tuesdays and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, for the calendar of events today, we have a finance committee meeting on October 11th. We have Tuesday market, by the way, before 8. You can bring your friends, family, and neighbors. And if you can't make it to the market, but still would like to donate uh, to the market with your goodies, like fresh produce or handcrafted masterpieces, please see Neil or a mar or a market team member. Uh, volunteers are welcome to help set up at 1 o'clock p.m. or break down at 7.45 p.m. And this week they'll be supporting the nonprofit partners, the North Shore Chamber of Commerce. On uh, Wednesday, October 12th, there'll be a Bible study from 10 to 11 a.m. in the Adam Conference Room. Members will take turns leading our Bible study while they're welcome. Sunday, October 16th, Altar Flowers and the worship leader will be Bert Facilio and there will be a council meeting. Uh, Sunday, October 23rd, there will be a property team meeting. Uh, on Sunday, October 30th, will be Youth Sunday. Sunday, November 6th, uh, there will be a Tuesday market by the tea meeting. Uh, on Tuesday, November 8th, there will be the one year anniversary celebration for the market that we have here. On the 13th of November, there will be a stewardship Sunday. And on Sunday, November 20th, will be Thanksgiving Sunday. Are there any other announcements out there?
Thank you. Are there any other announcements? So for our closing hymn, we'll be singing Amazing Love and the Crazy Hole of Jesus and Mary. Thank you. 